Welcome to the Responsible Research and Innovation Tools Project. My name is Steve Miller and I'm the Principal Investigator on the project at University College London, which is one of the 19 hubs for responsible research and innovation that are being set up around Europe. With me today I have Alejandra Palermo. She is the Manager for Open Innovation at the Royal Society of Chemistry. So, Welcome Alejandra, thank, thank you, you very much indeed for coming today. Thank you very much for inviting me. <clears throat> I mean, your job title really intrigues me. So this is Manager for Open Innovation. That's right. Why did the Royal Society of Chemistry feel that they needed somebody in this particular role? Um, just two years, less than two years ago, the RSC, the Royal Society of Chemistry, carried out a survey uh, with key leaders on, on the area of the chemistry to understand the future landscape of uh, dissemination of chemical information. We also later on, one year ago, organized a town meeting to understand the role of open innovation in the chemical sciences, what actually means open innovation for the chemical sciences community, and also what, if any, was the role of the RSC in this space and taking into consideration that there are UK agencies working in the open innovation area supporting innovation and also other facilitators uh, that support innovation at a global scale. And it was interesting that during those, that meeting we discussed what actually means open innovation, even though open innovation is a term that is over 10 years old, uh, as a new mantra for collaboration between India, industry, academia and other stakeholders to develop new products, new processes, new services, the risking and accelerating innovation. Even though that's defined, the meaning of open innovation for different parties means different things. So that was an interesting aspect of the town meeting. Another one is that we identified that the RSC has a role to play as a non-for-profit organisation, we are the we can be the honest broker for the open innovation space, bringing the right parties together. So from there, that this the RSC has uh, decided to start a new initiative, which is the open innovation, um, and so we is across all the different sectors of the RSC. So you say there's a role for the society in open innovation. Exactly what is it that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis? The Royal Society of Chemistry mission is to support and advance excellence in the chemical sciences and we believe that open science will actually uh, advance excellence in the chemical sciences for the benefit of our society and it will underpin and support innovation ultimately. So that's my role, is actually supporting open science and understanding what actually means to the research community the new era of open data, open access and open science. So it's really building the right partnerships and networks together to identify areas of common interest that actually can spark innovation. So I'm working in, in different sectors, supporting different sectors, understanding their needs, bringing together industry, academia, government, and other stakeholders. It could be SMEs, it could be um, non-NGOs. Uh, and the areas that I'm working currently is formulation, formulation science. I am also working in the biosciences and healthcare, um, and also in the materials, particularly in the materials for energy storage, and also, um, in very much in an embryonic stage in the area of catalysis, which is a cross-sector discipline. So I'm interested in, I guess, why the society chose you for this job. Now, I believe you've had quite a bit of uh, international experience working on behalf of the Royal Society of Chemistry. So how has that played into what it is you're doing at the moment? Well, as we know, science is international, science is global, it has no limits. So the fact that uh, making the connections, international connections and building international partnerships is at the core of what I do and what the society is about. So I think my knowledge of what's happening in the scientific community across the world is important and it brings that link into what happens in the UK as well. And these international partners can bring a different perspective on the work? Absolutely, absolutely. 
Um, if this is interesting for one interesting example was we have two years ago organized a meeting uh, in Africa to understand the issues about water quality in Africa. And we realized that there are so many uh, similarities with the problems of the quality of water and the role of the chemical sciences community in trying to solve those problems in Africa and in India and in the UK in a way. But Africa and India, the problems are very similar in terms of water quality. So last year we organized the very first meeting to discuss how can we share expertise and knowledge and experiences between the researchers in Africa, in India and in the rest of the world for the benefit of society really. So we're trying in this project to create a climate for responsible research and innovation. Now that's not to sort of say that what people have been doing up to now hasn't been responsible, but I think it is an idea that we're trying to take things a bit further. What would it mean to you to, if all projects, both academic research and then as they get into the innovation process, were truly responsible in their activities? What do you think you'd be looking for over and above what exists already? I think this is a, as, it's a new area of research. Research is, is going on the big changes with the, uh, the stage of opening of research and opening of data. So I think bringing together the partners at earlier stages to, the, to create successful partnerships is essential. So those partnerships consist of the scientific community, understanding the technological challenges, so working closely to industry from earlier stages, and also engaging the funding agents in the process and the society as well. So I think that's, that's a, it's a key step change for me, is it would be that, bringing those partnerships at earlier stages. And those partnerships has to trust each other. So chemistry is a subject that benefited enormously from some very blue skies thinking, particularly in the early 1900s, the development of quantum mechanics and then ideas about the chemical bond and so on. Mm -hmm. Is there a concern that too much emphasis on societally responsible research is going to squeeze out the opportunities for this kind of blue skies thinking? I think that's a very good question. Um, obviously, blue sky research has to exist, and we have to support blue sky research. But it has to be good balance between blue mm -hmm. sky research and uh, research that leads to products or to innovation. I think also we have to consider where. No, we cannot be experts in all areas. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about chemistry, but in, across the sciences, we cannot be, any country cannot be expert in all areas. So refocusing how you fund blue sky research, how you find, apply research is important. Um, I, can, I cannot uh, um, support the idea of just moving the funding directly to apply research and forget it about, about blue research. I think, as you mentioned in the examples you have given, uh, there is an unexpected mm -hmm. innovation that can come, or more than innovation, I would say invention, creation, something new, unexpected, that we don't know what's, what's going to be. And there, we have to continue supporting. But not everyone has to be doing that sort of kind of research. Having said that, I think there is a revalorization within the chemistry community in particular, uh, and in scientific community at large, uh, of the value of applied research. So I think before perhaps the chemistry community maybe 20 years ago were thinking of applied research as something of the different scale that core chemistry. And I think that has changed, the perception has changed. Why? Because there are actually outcomes from mm. that applied research that modifies our lives, our day-to-day -day life. And also, I think that understanding the role of the chemistry or the chemical sciences play in the challenges that the society faces today, such as energy, such as healthcare, such as water, I think that is revalorizing the, the role of chemistry in applied research. 
Clearly, as the name suggests, the RRI Tools project is aiming to develop a toolkit that will help researchers and innovators in this area of responsible research and innovation. What do you think that this toolkit should contain? What are some of the key things that you think we ought to be providing as a project to the research and innovation community that would really help, that would really make a difference? I think obviously ethics is a key aspect <clears throat> for the toolkit. But there are other aspects that may be important to consider. I think the communication, communication of the research outputs to society at large needs to be considered and needs to be funded appropriately. So it has to be planned throughout the research planification of the project and funded accordingly. Um, and also perhaps training on how you communicate the results or the outputs of your research. So media training is important. Um, communications training in the diverse ways is very important. So skills in that area. Another area that perhaps will influence, influence the way that we um, do innovate in the future is how we share data and knowledge. So perhaps the training on how you actually share mm. the information is important. So skills should be quite an, uh, an important aspect of the toolkit. A lot of people are concerned that while it might be fairly easy to develop responsible research in an academic environment, to have codes of ethics, to have good practice guides and so on, that it's in the area of innovation, the rather messy world where new science has to become translated into products, products that can sell at a profit with a market orientation. So how do you see this issue of responsible research and innovation working in this kind of commercial innovation, market orientated environment? That's got to be a real challenge, isn't it? I think it's a big challenge. Obviously, when we talk about industry, we, we have to talk about commercial issues, commercial aspects. But I think we are in an era of big changes. Um, and I'm talking about relatively short-term changes that will affect the way that we conduct research and how we share research with industry and academia, how we collaborate uh, with industry. And I think you talk about openness, and, I, and there are lots of different examples how now things are changing very rapidly in terms of opening up data from particular pharmaceutical sector, uh, open up data that actually is not going to be used by the company itself, but it can be used by the research community, and it could lead to new innovation. So I think that's, that's a key aspect. One of the, the ways that perhaps we can come about innovation in this, in, this, in this respect, it could be at early stages of uh, partnerships, creating uh, partners that actually bring together partners that actually are working at very early stages of the process. So instead of working about knowledge transfer, we talk about co-creation of opportunities for innovation. So that's, and I think that's the big change in, in, this, in this stage. Alejandro, thank you very much indeed for your oh, time thanks. today. And uh, it's been very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.